Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Today, I'm going to be painting Radukar from Warhammer Quest Cursed City using Army Painter Speed Paints. This is the big bad character in Cursed City. I probably should have left him until much later in this series of painting guides, but I just couldn't resist getting some paint on him as early as possible. He is a very cool miniature, even with his very silly hat. And as with all of the other speed paint videos I've done, I'm going to be keeping this very simple, very straightforward. And for this particular miniature, we have started with a base coat of Army Painter Matte White Spray. I'm then getting some Army Painter Shining Silver, and I'm going to apply this to all of the metal areas on the miniature. So that's the armor, there's some small metal details on the knife, on his belt, his belt buckle, and of course his sword. There is also a tiny little metal badge up in his hat, which I did miss to begin with, but I do catch it in a moment. With the metallic paint dry, we're going to deal with the skin, and of course we're going to use Crusader skin for this. And I'm using a finer brush than I normally would use for the Army Painter Speed Paints, because I'm working in quite a confined space on his face and chest. But also, I want to make sure that this coat of Crusader skin is really thin. I want a lot of the white to show through, because he is a vampire, he has very pale skin, so I'm really applying this as thinly as possible, pulling the paint quite thin across the whole miniature. Next we're going to switch to hardened leather, we're going to apply this over all of the areas where we painted the metallic shining silver, except for the sword blade, I have something special in mind for that. But we're also going to put the hardened leather over the belt. The hardened leather over the matte white gives a really, really nice leather appearance, which I really, really like. And it actually makes painting this central section of the miniature very easy because all of the metallic parts and all of the leather belt are all in the same area so you can just slap the paint over the whole thing. Next I'm switching to Gravelord Grey and we're going to apply this to Radukar's beard. Just making sure we don't get it over the chest that we have already painted. And for that reason I'm still using my finer brush for this. But we're also going to use Gravelord Grey on the hat. And the other thing I've done with Gravelord Grey is I have just marked out the eyes on the wolf pelts. And this is because when I apply the paint over the wolf pelts, I wanted some extra darker shading in those eye sockets. And speaking of the wolf pelts, that's what we're going to paint next. We're going to use Holy White and we're going to apply this liberally over all of the wolf pelts, including the dangling legs on the back. And I really am applying quite a lot of paint to this, so we get quite a lot of the greyer shading on this. And of course, when this is dry, if you want to do something like dry brush over the pelt to make it whiter, add more highlights, you can do that. I'm not doing that in this particular video. I'm pretty much relying on the speed paints to do all of the work for me. And I think the holy white looks really good. Next up is blood red, and we're just going to apply this to Radukar's trousers. We just have to make sure we don't get it on any of the armor we've already painted. And we do want to avoid getting it on the boots and the cloak as much as possible because we're going to be painting those next. And if we can avoid getting red on it, then we don't have to do as much touch up before we do that. But of course, if you do get any overspill, once the speed paint has completely dry, you can overpaint with army paint and matte white just to neaten up your edges. And then we are going to grim black. As I said, we're going to apply this to the cloak. I probably could have gone for a purple or something for this, but I like the idea of keeping the head vampire in blacks and greys and whites, with just that pop of colour, the blood red on his trousers. And of course, in addition to the cloak, we're also going to put grim black on the boots. We're pretty much there, we're just going to use some orc skin to paint in the little vines on the scenic base. Again, that's just going to give the miniature another pop of colour. And then we're going back to Gravelord Grey to paint the stones on the scenic base. I always really like the way that the Gravelord Grey looks over the white. I think it does give a very nice stone look. Finally, we're going to use High Lord Blue, and this is on the blade of the sword. Radukar's sword is a special sword that he acquired by slaying some monstrous beastie. And I'm just going to apply this High Lord Blue to give it a slightly magical shimmering blue finish. I'm actually putting too much paint on in the video here, but by continually brushing the blade, I do manage to get enough of the paint back off that we have a nice silver sword with a blue glow to it. 
And that's it finished with speed paints. As always, I have painted the base with Sterling Mud and then I have just painted Lead Belcher around the edge because Radikar is one of the named villains. And now we can do a little 360 tour of the final thing. I should point out I did go back onto the trousers and do a little bit of highlighting with Evil Sun Scarlet just to make that red pop a little bit more. I felt the trousers were just a little bit too blotchy. But other than that, this is entirely the work of speed paints. You can see the sword blade has a nice blue glow to it. And I think the wolf pelt came out really well. I am a big fan of the holy white, I think it works really, really nicely. And as always, hardened leather over metallics and also over the white to make that leather belt looks good too. Overall, I'm happy with this. I do need to do a few more things. I need to finish off the base, a little bit of highlighting, static grass, all the usual stuff. But as far as this video goes, that's it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.